Let's talk a little bit about prospects. August is the toughest time of the year to be a baseball podcaster because aside from the games, there's not a lot going on to talk about. The playoffs are still, you know, seven weeks out. You get award talk soon, but not quite yet. It's still a little bit too early to talk about things like MVP, Rookie of the Year. I mean, we can mention it, but still a lot of baseball left to be played. So this time of year, I like to talk about prospects. And Baseball America is far and away, far and away, the best spot, in my opinion, for prospect coverage. And they have released their list of the top 10 Yankees prospects as of right now. And a lot of familiar names on this list. So let's go through it. Obviously, you see the Martian, Jason Dominguez, maintains the number one spot. He has pretty consistently been top three in the Yankees prospects since about 2020. Signed when he was 16. Obviously made a huge debut last year. He's coming back from Tommy John surgery. Uh, he just recovered from the oblique injury, and he's getting ramped back up at AAA. But the numbers this year so far, pretty good. Uh, he is hitting 316 with six home runs, 889 OPS in just 114 at-bats. By the way, these stats are as of about 7 p.m. this evening when I was putting this graphic together. So, you know, there might be some that have gone up or down tonight. But uh, just taking a, a snapshot in time of how everything looks on August 8th. I've seen a number of articles lately uh, about how the switch hitting is kind of a dying art, especially in the Americas. They mentioned that or especially in America, not the Americas, but in America because of all the travel ball. They talked about that on the broadcast tonight. Dominguez, obviously an international signee, uh, but he's a fantastic switch hitter, the rare plus-plus switch hitter with power, and he could be in the big leagues again as soon as next month, so stay tuned for that. Spencer Jones comes in at number two. He's hitting 246 this year. Okay power, 13 home runs, 757 OPS, still runs like a deer. 21 stolen bases, but the strikeouts are a big problem. 149 strikeouts and 358 at-bats. I haven't done the math on what percentage that is, but it's pretty high. It's not what you want. Moving down the list, we have George Lombard Jr. and Roderick Arias, a pair of 19-year-old shortstops. Neither one of them putting up huge offensive numbers, but still very much in the development phase of their careers. Obviously running wild on minor league catchers with 30 and 29 stolen bases, respectively. I'll tell you what, Lombard Jr. impressed me in spring training. And Roderick Arias was the top international signee the year after Dominguez. And he's also a switch hitter. So, you know, we'll see how that shakes out. But uh, I think both of these guys have a bright future. Chase Hampton comes in at number five. He has not pitched much this year because of injuries, just 16 and two-thirds innings pitched. And at 23 years old, this was a big year in his development. The Yankees probably expected him to be in AAA by now and par- perhaps be an option to fill in for somebody like Nestor Cortez when he's struggling. But it has not worked out. Just six games started, just 16 and two-thirds innings pitched. But if he finishes strong at least, you know, you got a chance to put yourself in the conversation next spring. Will Warren at number six obviously watched him last night get smashed, did not have a good year at AAA either. I think he's got some potential, but he's not ready yet, in my opinion. Number seven is Ben Hess, 21 years old, drafted this year, 5.80 ERA in college, but 106 strikeouts in 68 innings. And I was listening to a podcast, I think it was Hot Sheet, where they were talking about, you know, what do you look for in a college pitcher, right? Because there's so much offense in college. And really swing and miss stuff is huge. And 68 innings, 106 strikeouts is legit. That plays. So we'll see if they can transform him into a really good pitcher. Same goes for Bryce Cunningham, 21 years old, second-round pick, 4.36 ERA in college, 96 strikeouts in 84 and two-thirds innings. I think it's interesting that they took some college pitchers in the early rounds this year, obviously trying to replenish the system with some polished arms after trading away a number of guys in recent years, you know, J.P. Sears, Hayden Wisniewski, Randy Vasquez, and, you know, people these days are saying that college baseball is essentially at minor league level in a lot of cases. I mean, it is really good coaching now, really good coaching, really good metrics. It's a lot of money in college baseball. Rounding out the top 10, Ben Rice at number nine and Brock Selvage at number 10. Uh, Big fans of both these guys. Ben Rice obviously has huge power, seven home runs coming into tonight. 
three home runs in a game already. He's the reason I am bald, by the way. Shaved it again today. I think I think I'm getting used to it. I like the way the blue light from the studio reflects off my dome. I like it. I dig it. Brock Selvridge, uh, legitimately good stuff from what I hear. Um, I've seen a couple of clips. Reminds me of Scott Kazmier a little bit, if you guys remember him. Another guy I think you could see shoot up the list next year is Henry Lillane. Six foot seven, lefty, 20 years old. Six and a third innings this year. But if he can stay healthy, he's got ace-level stuff, 20 years old. So let me know in the comments which prospects you're most excited to see. I obviously can't wait to see Dominguez. I'm looking forward to seeing the development of Roderick Arias and George Lombard Jr. as they move through the minor leagues. I think they're going to both be really good. And I want to get a better look at Chase Hampton uh, as he progresses. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps other fans find the channel. NYY Recaps is also available on all your favorite podcast platforms. And we'll see you next time.